Now here's another discrete mathematics problem, uh, proof by induction. I thought this one was rather unique and, and a little challenging because it kind of bucks the rules a little bit based on what we understand of how to do induction. The way that it's set up, you have to kind of th think about it in terms of m numbers that actually can't go one right after the other. It's hard to explain until you see it. So let's talk about this. Okay. So define a set X recursively as follows. We have the base case that two is an X and recursive case if X, little X is an element in the set X, so is the element X plus 10. Okay. So we're going to use induction to prove that every element of X is even. Now this is, this is a very interesting problem, so pay attention real carefully to listen and listen to what I'm saying, not necessarily always what I'm writing. All right, so let's do the base case. Now again, it's very comfortable to do a couple of base cases just to make sure you're following what's happening. So the base case is two, and we know that's an element of X, but we want to show that every element of X is even. So I can write two as two times one, so two is even, and that's based on the the fact that uh, any number two p for p and z is considered even. Okay, we're going to be using that rule a lot here. So um, if you want to check another base just to see what happens, so. If two is an X, that means that according to this next line, that 12 is an X. So 12 is an X. I can write 12 as two times six. So 12 is even. Okay. Again, you only have to show this one, but I'm doing this one for my health to make sure I know what's going on. Okay. Now, I fiddled around with this so quite some time to kind of figure out how to think about this. All right, so let me get a scratch sheet of paper here to kind of talk about what I did. The, the typical inductive hypothesis is one that says, okay, I'm going to say that uh, K minus one is in X. And then if K minus one is X, that means that K minus one is equal to two P for some P in Z. Okay. Because if, if I'm doing an inductive hypothesis, I have to assume that this step is true. But what happens when I do the inductive step though? I have to start with K. I have to start with some K and X. Now what's the problem with that? Can you think about what, why that's a problem about going about it this way? I mean, we've learned from class, we did learn that there's a variety of ways that you can look at things. It doesn't have to be strictly along the lines of K minus one and K. The pro what's the problem? Well, if K minus one is even, what does that force K to be? It forces K to be odd. So this method of looking at it, it won't work. And see, this is what the thing is about induction. Just if you think you can just sit down and just do the proof beginning to end when you're brand new at it, that doesn't always happen unless you are just really clever and I know those folks are out there, but you wouldn't be watching this video if you're that clever. Ha <laughs> ha, just kidding. So anyway, mess around with it. I had to mess around with it. I'm, I looked at this for a good 15 minutes. It's like, okay, what's the problem here? So I have to look at this slightly differently than the standard step-by-step, -step, but I still have a way to do that and make it work. So for my inductive hypothesis, I'm going to state that this is true. If X is an X to some random X, then X equals two K for some K in Z. Okay. So that's, I'm going to say, this is the truth. If I pick an element in X, then X equals two K for some K in Z. Now my inductive step will look like this. Well, if I know that I have some X and X that's even, well, why not? Let's do the next X. So I know X is in X. So I can also say, um, 
Well, let's just write that down. If x is in x, so is x plus 10. Then I can say, well, since x equals 2k is in x, then x plus 10 equal 2k plus 10 equal 2 times k plus 5 is also in x. Now I can say here that x plus 10 is equal to 2 times the quantity k plus 5 is also even. So what I've done here is I've taken a random element of x and stated that it's even. And that's my inductive hypothesis based on what I have statement right here. So I'm taking any an, another element that I know is possible and showing that it's even. So that means that, well, if I have an element in x, assuming it's even, every other element in x is going to be even. So I can say here, therefore, if x is an element in the set x, then all elements are even. Now that is a little tricky. But again, you have to run into a corner. And this is the corner that I ran into. Again, I'm not that clever. That's the corner I ran into doing it strictly by the book. Didn't work. So I thought, okay, what else can I try? And this is what I tried. And that works.